in this video, I'm going to show you how to create sprints in your Agile. So let's get started. So your sprint has to be created from your product backlog. What is product backlog is something I have explained in my previous video. If you have seen that, this is my product backlog. Backlog is nothing but all the tasks that I need to work on in future. Then can you see an option here called as create a sprint? I just need to click on it. And the moment I will click on it, it will try to give me, it will, it is asking me, plan your sprint. I just need to drag some tasks that are present in my product backlog to my current sprint. So I just need to move some tasks from my product backlog to my current sprint. The name of the sprint is MKT Sprint 2. You can change that later, whatever name you want to give. So I can move the tasks that are there in my product backlog to my current sprint, and then I can start my sprint. I can click on the button. Your MKT is nothing but the name of the organization that you're working on, and then probably be your team name. Let's say the pay, your team name is payment team, so payment, and then sprint name. Now let's say that your company is, let's say I'm getting company is two years old. And now after completing its two years, the sprint is number one. So your sprint will be one. Let's say the company is two years old and the sprint is now 30 seconds. So 2.32. I just gave you a random example. You can put it out anything that you would love to. This is how practically most of the organization name their current sprint. Now your duration, they're asking you to, what should be your duration? So generally in most of the organization who are following agile, they follow either one week as a sprint duration or two weeks as a sprint duration. Let's say that I'm saying that my duration will be for one week. So I'm saying that let it start from 12th of April and date it is not asking because I have given my duration as one week. The moment I will click on start. Now this is my Jira board or sprint board. This is how my Jira board or sprint board looks like. Now, if you see, it has all the stages or all the states. Now, if you see this four tasks, right? Now these four tasks are in dev in progress now. I mean, this is something that my dev should start progressing on. Now let's say that my dev has moved this task to dev complete because the coding is completed. And now probably my QA will start testing it. So he will move this task to QA progress. So when he is in progress, the task will be QA progress. Now let's say that you're trying to raise a bug now. Now that bug will go to dev in progress state, the first state, because that bug has to be QA complete first before you complete this particular task. I'm just teaching you how to work on the sprint. And then let's say that now this task is really working fine. You can move this task to QA complete. And after that, I mean, QA complete in the sense your testing is done for that particular task. And then you will move it to done. If done means, your task is done and not released into the production. And if you see down, it is released into the production. If you do release into the production, it means the software is deployed at the production side. But you cannot expect each and everything to be completed, right? Now let's say that this task is in the dev, dev complete and not been picked by the developer. Let's believe that. Even this task is in dev incomplete. Even this task is in the dev complete. Let's believe that. And there are two tasks are there, which are my QA progress. And there are, suppose the sprint looks like this, in which out of four tasks, one task I have released into the production, or let's say it is done. And let's say the one task is QA dev complete and another two tasks are QA in progress. The moment you do your complete sprint, right? This task will be gone now from the current sprint and next sprint. But these three tasks, will again come back to the next sprint because with the same states, what you can see here, that means if you can see this dev complete is one task, which is here. And if you see your uh, QA progress, there are two tasks. If you try to create another task, another sprint, which will be 2.33, these three tasks, the states will be same. The moment I do complete sprint, you can see that one issue was done, three issues were incomplete and you are trying to uh, move those tasks to the new sprint or product backlog it is asking you right 
you can either move this three tasks to the product backlog or new sprint. If you move to the product backlog, the story remains same. Again, you need to work on creating a new sprint from there. Let's say that you are moving it to the new sprint. The moment you click on complete, you can see the status report it is giving you. The status report in the sense issue not completed, MKT task number 70, 19, and 20 are not completed. The status are QA progress, QA progress, and Devin progress. And the issues completed outside of this print are MKT task number 18, which the status is done. So this is how your status report looks like. I mean, your sprint status report. Now let's say that if you go back to your backlog again, now if let's say you're going to your active sprint now, now you can see that there is nothing, there is no current sprint, right? So because the sprint is over now. Now again, if you see, in the backlog, you have now backlog and your next sprint, which is 2.33. This 2.33 you have not created, it has come automatically, right? Earlier was 2.32. As I said, it will automatically increment itself. Now, if you remember this three task, this three tasks are the one which you did not complete it earlier, remember? Now, let's say that I want few more tasks to be worked upon. Now, the task that you're trying to add now will go to the first states now. That means dev in progress. Remember, now the moment you start this particular sprint, it will again ask you the same thing. You can start this particular sprint. Now, as I told you, the three tasks, right? The st stages of this three tasks will remain the same. That is my one task, which were there in my QA dev complete will remain in the dev complete. My two tasks, which were in the QA progress will remain in QA progress. Now, when you start your testing this time, uh, let's say developer will be working on this particular uh, particular task and this particular task. Definitely he will work on this particular task before because he was working on this particular task from before sprint itself, right? So he will continue working on this one. Being the tester, you should work on this and this depending on which is your more priority one. And then let's say if this is done, you can move it here. If this is done, definitely you can move it here. And then if you have started it, you can come bring it here. And let's say that dev have given the fix for this or dev has completed development for this. You can move this task to dev complete. Now see if something is happening in this fashion, right? Now it is easy for your scrum master or product manager or your even your managers to keep a note of what my developer and testers are working on, where exactly they're working on, which tasks exactly they're working on, and what is the status of my each task on daily to daily basis. It will be easy for them to identify that from here. So that's the reason we follow sprint. Your sprint can be your seven days is two weeks, three weeks, one month, six months, or it can be custom. You can make it by all yourself. Like I want my first sprint to be hundred days, next sprint to be 50 days. Nobody do that by the way. I'm just telling you that there is an option to do that. Now, let's say that now next day, this five days remaining will get converted to four days remaining, three days remaining, two days remaining like that. The reason it is telling as five days because in most of the IT companies do not work on weekends. They only work on weekdays. So this is how your sprint looks like. So let's say that tomorrow again, you are trying to complete this particular sprint by completing this, completing the sprint. So again, in the next sprint, you can still see this four task. You will not see this four task until unless you will not move it to the done position. The moment you put it on the done position, you will no longer see in the next sprint or future sprint or product backlog. Now, if you complete it now, you can only see these three tasks, which are in the status of my dev complete, QA progress and QA complete. The tasks which is done are considered as it is released into the production. So I'm just giving you an example that the moment you complete this sprint, it will show you that one issue was done. Can you see in done, you have only one task. So that's the reason it is showing that one task was done. Three issues are were incomplete. So three tasks are incomplete. That will now be a part of your next sprint. So it will give you a status report again that completed issues are this particular task and issues not completed are this particular three tasks. Now let's say that if you want to go to your product backlog once again, you can see that your next sprint is automatically renamed as 
that is your next print as i told you your two is representing your year of your company and three four is representing your the the week in that particular year so when i say 2.32 that means my company is two years old and 34 weeks old and my company name is mkt and i am working on payment application or payment team so this is how naming convention works in most of the organization and this is how you deal with your product backlog and moving the product backlog to your current sprint this is how you create sprint one more thing i didn't show you guys that in payment module let's say that he is trying to create uh, issues here in this particular payment module if you remember i had one app, i had many tasks in my particular epic right so if you open this particular task any task i can move it to any sprint now let's say that i can move it to current sprint that is 2.34 the moment you will go to your active sprint you can see this task now 2.341 the moment it is not there now because I have closed my particular sprint. So this is how it actually works. This is how you're actually, this actually works your sprint, moving your products from your product backlog to create a new sprint. Whatever the, the knowledge I have given to you guys practically is the only way you can learn this and you have not missed anything. This is all about your sprints, how to create it, when to create it, from where to create it, how to move the task. This is all about your sprints. There is nothing what I have not taught to you. I hope this video was useful. In case yes, give a big thumbs up. Thank you guys. See you soon in the next video.